So I am super blessed. I have literally like two music setups here in my home studio. I'm blessed to even have a home studio. And I constantly think back to the time when I first got into music production. I was a teenager living with my parents, setting up a folding table with one of the cheapest Windows laptops possible, just trying to make some music. And I look around at all these tools and I think if I was starting today, what would be the bare bones setup? What would I use to get started making my own music now? Not back when uploading to MySpace was cool, now. So that's what today's video is gonna be all about. We're gonna get out of the studio and we're gonna get into the bedroom. Not that way. I wanna put some serious thought into if I was just starting today, just a kid in a bedroom, what would I go for? What would be the easiest way for me to get into it? Today's video is gonna be sponsored by DistroKid, but I'll tell you more about that later. All right, so what would I use as my main computer if I was just starting out today? You know, as a young kid on a really tight budget. So I actually don't think I would even use a laptop if I was starting again today. I would likely use my phone, but if I really wanted a dedicated music making device, I might opt for an iPad mini. I think this is a great choice for beginners because there's so many great apps. iPad minis are relatively affordable when you compare them to the price of a full computer. Uh, and the apps are very, very capable. And on that note, what apps would I use? Well, there's a ton of amazing apps uh, for iPad, some free, some paid, but how about something that's totally free, like BandLab? I think if I was just starting out today, I would wanna save as much money as possible, and if I could get something as powerful as BandLab, that would likely be my number one choice. For being a totally free app, it has so much built into it, including lots of free sound packs and virtual instruments. But not only that, they have built-in effects racks. So if I'm recording something like guitar, I don't have to go diving and looking for, you know, like I would on a computer, uh, which VST is the best? Which VST can I afford? How do I use that VST? Everything being sort of housed inside BandLab's system with BandLab's collection of sounds and effects kind of makes it a lot easier for the beginner, I think, and makes it easier for you to get a good sound faster. It takes a lot of the headache away. Next thing to consider would be an audio interface. An audio interface is good for a lot of reasons. Now, the one I've chosen here today is the Archeria Minifuse 2. Maybe it's a little overkill for a beginner for just starting out today, but one of the great things about it is it has a USB port on the back. So we'll be able to connect this to the iPad via USB-C, but also connect a MIDI controller via the USB port because we'll be taking up the one on the iPad for the audio interface. And of course, I'll be able to plug in a mic, plug in some instruments, plug in some headphones. Now I did mention MIDI controller and I know this is a hot topic here on this channel, so please just leave me alone about the MIDI controllers. No, but what would I do if I was just starting today? I mean, there's so many choices, so please don't take like this specific choice as like, oh, that's the best one. But I think one that I would lean towards if I was starting today would be the MVave SMK25. Hey all just a quick note while I'm editing this video, uh, as you can see in the video, the MVIV controller is working totally fine and it worked totally fine in preparation for this video uh, and a bit after I was done working on this video, but then as I continued to work on the project uh, with the setup that you see here connected via the audio interface, it kind of stopped working being connected that way. I'm not sure why, I don't know if it's a specific iPad power issue. Uh, if I connect it directly to the iPad, it works uh, no problem at all. If I connect it via Bluetooth, Bluetooth to an app that uses Bluetooth MIDI, it works totally fine as well. But for some reason, something was causing it or is causing it to not work in this particular way. So if you're looking to do this exact same setup, maybe get something more tried and true like an Akai MPK Mini, uh, because when I used this, it, there was no problem in the same connection, the same routing.
we're talking about potentially miking things, I would probably just pick up a tried and true Shure SM58. Of course, if you're a beginner, you're likely limited to a budget and you don't want to buy everything all at once. It can seem overwhelming. I want to break down for you what I think you should prioritize and what order you can get each piece of gear in. But before that, I want to mention that back when I was first starting and I started to finish my first music and I wanted to get it out there to the world, get it on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, all the places people are listening to music, I chose DistroKid as my distributor and they've been my distributor since way before they ever sponsored a video on this channel, but they are the sponsor for this video, so let me tell you about them a little bit. The reason I even chose DistroKid in the first place was because they make it super easy where you just pay one annual fee and you can release as much music as you want. And over the years, they've added even more features and goodies that make it even easier for me to recommend it to beginners. First of all, the app is super convenient. You can upload music directly from the app. You can even check in your bank so you can cash out when you have enough money to deposit to your bank account. DistroKid also gives you access to a bunch of promotional tools like graphics, promo cards, memes that you can put out. And they also have HyperFollow, which builds a little landing page that you can share with everybody. You can add links to it. And when your music drops, people can just go to that one link and find everything you want them to find. So it's kind of more than just a distributor, but for me, it's the really easy way to get your music up on all those platforms. And there's also a bunch of bonuses included. Today, my subscribers can save 7% if you use the link in the description off your first annual membership to DistroKid. So fight off the perfectionism, get your music out there, use DistroKid, link is in the description. Okay, so the most important part of building this setup will be the computer or the device that you choose to make the music on. Now, like I said before, if you have a phone, you can totally use a phone with some mobile app. So this could be a, a free way, even though phones are not free, obviously, but a way to use something you might already have to get started making music right away. My recommendation from before was, of course, uh, using an iPad as a dedicated device, but one of the reasons I chose BandLab in general was because it can run on uh, a web browser. So basically any computer that you get, even if it's just a Chromebook or something, you can use this in your web browser. Now having the iPad or the phone alone is fine because most interfaces for most apps have ways that you can play notes right on the screen. Now headphones or what you listen to this music on is going to be pretty important. So that is what I would consider the next step. This is a pair of Audio-Technica uh, ATH-M50Xs. These are a very basic pair of mixing headphones. I decided to get these because I Googled, you know, what certain producers use. Like I think even Phineas has these listed in his gear. Uh, of course, a lot of big name producers are using higher end headphones, but these are a good starter pair uh, that are relatively budget friendly. If you want to be really budget friendly, go get yourself a pair of Apple ear pods and just use those for now. Now there's a branching path after this, after you've got a music making device, after you've got your headphones, there's a branching path here. If you are somebody who records a lot of vocals or if you're a guitar player and you want to record a lot of instruments directly in to your music making device, then the next step would be to get an audio interface because it's got the inputs that you'll need for that. If you're not doing that, if you're strictly doing in the box stuff and just making instrumentals using virtual instruments, I would say the next step would be a MIDI keyboard. Now before we were using the audio interface to connect our MIDI keyboard to the iPad via the USB port on the back, but you don't necessarily need that in this instance because you can just use a USB-C adapter uh, and connect the MIDI controller directly to the iPad for this specific use case. Uh, and then we're off and running, playing notes on the iPad with our MIDI controller. So again, if you're in the box using virtual instruments, get a MIDI controller next once you've got headphones and music making devices settled.
If not, if you really want to be able to record vocals uh, and or vocals in an instrument, I should say, an audio interface would be the next step, making sure that it's compatible with your music making device. I should also say that they do make USB microphones that you can connect directly to uh, your computer or your iPad or whatever. So you don't necessarily need an audio interface in that case, but it is something that you'll end up growing into uh, if you do plan to record instruments in addition to just vocals and things like that. So that is the order that you should consider getting these things in if you're working your way up through a budget-friendly setup. All right, so what do you think about my recommendations in this video? Do you all have experience with some of this gear or do you have alternatives, things that you would swap out for my recommendations? Let me know in a comment down below. It could really help somebody who's starting out right now. And if you are somebody who's just starting out right now, uh, I hope you found this video helpful. There's a lot of other tutorials and resources here on this channel. So subscribe, go through the backlog of videos. Even we do live streaming sometimes. So if you want to get some of your questions answered, hopping into the live stream chat um, and hanging out with the community is a great way to go. You can hit the join button to join the channel, become a part of our Discord community. You also get perks with that, like free sample pack downloads, your name in the credits of the video, a badge next to your name in live streams, members only workshops and members only videos, just another avenue of learning and all those things. But if you want to keep up with me, Instagram and threads links are in the description down below. Don't forget to check out the distro kid link for 7% off sign up today so you can get your music out there. Uh, and that's going to be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.